Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, it's a privilege to be able to come together. Thank you for this holy people. Lord, thank you for this holy gathering, your sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In all things, we give thanks. It's your will concerning us. Father, we ask you for ears to hear and eyes to see, <clears throat> Lord, to be attentive to the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gifts that are stirred up in here, dear Lord, as you will your way by your Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We give thanks. Amen and amen. 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 We give God praise. We're amen. teaching on spiritual gifts. And I want to always emphasize from the outset that no man or woman can teach you how to administer, or minister rather, a spiritual gift. That is a gift that is given in a situation as the Lord needs by the Spirit. The Spirit knows what we all need, and He is the one. He is so it's great to learn of what like we're doing now, learning about the gifts so we know what's available to us. But nobody can teach you how to perform, I'll say, these gifts. They come by the Spirit. Here's always a gauge for you. I was just thinking about something in study. If the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit ordains that a gift be administered, there should be, listen, there should be an effect to it. There should be a deliverance mm -hmm. from it. See that? Right. Somebody just, well, I just got a word for you. I just got a word. You don't need to just have a word. You got a Bible full of words. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the word it was God. Oh, you see what I'm mean. saying? Right. So when that gifts come where it's a word of knowledge, you have people in some places, they're actually afraid to come to church because yes. they're afraid yes. somebody's going to get up and talk about them in front of other people. I feel sorry for you if you ever do it. I'm telling you now. Anybody that's doing that, that's not what that gift is for. If it's a word of knowledge, and that's why I thank God so much for the Spirit, the way He's teaching us. So we're seeing examples in Scripture how this in the gifts are ministered. Now, when it comes to Jesus, one other thing I want to say: <clears throat> Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. He didn't need spiritual gifts. He, he was God Amen. with us. Understand that? Amen. So this is the whole thing I want us to understand. To see how high and holy that this is so we will never, ever attempt to tamper with it. You see what I'm saying? Never right. tamper with it. Just let, the, just let whatever God wants to do, just let him do it by his spirit. And we just be obedient conduits to allow the Father to express the Son by the Spirit. And we know that it will always point to Jesus because Jesus already gave us the criteria. You listen, I'm going to send another comforter. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to testify of me. He didn't say he would testify of someone else. And what I always want to keep before us is to be filled with the Spirit. I tell you, you know, all of us are familiar with what a decoy is. There's so much, so many decoys in the church. Yeah. And if you're not filled with the Spirit, it's going to look real. You'll think you're actually accomplishing something. Well, this auxiliary did this, next one's going to do this, and next one's going to do that. Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. It, it, God has a much higher thing for us. You understand yeah. that? Yeah. God wants to, God, Jesus, the scripture says, he is, which is, in John, because John is in the Spirit. You hear that? There's another place in the scripture which was, is, and is to come. John says he is which is. The reason he said that because it, it, it already establishes I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. If you're in the spirit, it's not going to be. It is. He is. I keep saying that. You'll hear me emphasize that again and again and again in ministry. Glory to the name of God. He is. So if he is, if he is, what is everybody waiting on instead of letting him be? Amen. 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 See that? Right. 
That's why the scripture said, be ye holy, for I am holy. As we are being, he then is expressed from within his body. That's why when we, the higher we go and we learn these things, you'll get a better respect for your fellow man. Knowing that that person that you may have just written off may be an integral part of your maturity in Christ. Amen. See, that'll change things real fast. Glory to the name of Jesus. See, there's another spirit. If you all don't know where this is, it's in 2 Corinthians 11. And if you've been with this ministry some time, you've often heard me speak this description, just to, just to highlight it. Paul tells that church, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy because I'm afraid that just as the serpent beguiled Eve, so your minds will be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. And what he said was something that got my attention many, many years ago, and it has never left me, and I thank God by his spirit for letting me keep this. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 4 it says, For if he cometh, he that cometh preaches another Jesus. That got my attention because I used to be kind of naive. I thought if people were calling on the name of my Lord, they meant business like I did. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's not necessarily yeah. true. Just because they say, he says, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, you hear that? Another spirit. Another spirit. There are spirits operating all over the place. But is it the spirit of the living Christ? That's what we need to know. And you won't know that unless we are filled with his spirit. He says another spirit which you have not received. Listen. Or another gospel. See these decoys, these fakes out there luring people into just evil is what it's doing. See that? He says, which he had another gospel which he had not accepted. This was what his fear was. Ye might bear with him. See that? <clears throat> he might well, but you put up with that. Let me tell you something. Faith comes by hearing. You listen to something long enough, and you'll be, well, oh, well, maybe that makes sense. You know why? Because when you when you start doing that, you're taking off the mind of Christ, and you're starting to reason within yourself. Oh, right. And that'll get you in real big trouble. Yeah. You ever had a situation happen, you just talk in through yourself, how you going to handle it? And ask God nothing. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'll be prepared the next time I come around. See, like that, that, that we, that we can't live like that. Glory to the name of the Lord. There's a whole lot of counterfeit out there. This, this stuff is just just that out. <clears throat> excuse me, psychic readings, and it's not the power of God. It has a power. Listen, you got to understand the difference between soul power and spirit power. It has. Listen, if you got someone and they have a dominant spirit, a damnic nature after the flesh wants to control that person has over other people. Right. We're going to read that sheet of subscription in just a little bit. All right. All right. So if, you, if you're if you dealing, if you're leaning to your own understanding, you're just, just sitting up afraid at all the time. God has brought us into that by his blood. Amen. Whom the Son says free is free indeed. Amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. Amen. That kind of abundance, that, that, that warring against the mind, we are going to have to be filled with the Spirit because you are a hot commodity in, in, in the spiritual realm. We're supposed to be sons of God, but the enemy is trying to snatch us away you know, all the time, all the time. Doesn't matter who we are, how high up we go. Like my sister, I have a sister that she is really funny. She said, another level, a different devil. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. I was telling her what my pastor said. She paraphrased it. And that's the truth. You go up and there's something that's that's fine for you. But we gotta realize we are we we're not to be molested. We are we are God's people. Amen. We're not to be tossed about because somebody wants to look important. We we are sons of God with a purpose. Each person has a purpose. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to read you something that I've been trying to say in a nutshell, that it comes in a nutshell from Scripture. If you don't mind, go with me please to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Chapter 2. And I want to just read a couple of verses. I'm bouncing around in that chapter, but 
I'll tell you what the, the theme is, is warning against false teachers. Now, 2 Peter chapter 2, and we get down to verse, let's go to verse 12. These false teachers, as natural brute beasts, reading from the King James Version, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. See, the, if the true gifts are working in us, you don't have to worry about uh, any error. You see what I'm saying? If the true gift is working, if the Holy Spirit, he's not going to make a mistake. Right. See that? It says, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Listen, we're in a feast called Tabernacles. Precious people unto God. Precious people unto God. And off in some camp. Something uh, my husband and I experienced just this week. And it's, it's, a, it's a brother we have known for some time. And this is why... People need to be led of the Spirit. Someone spoke into his life many years ago. Whether it was God or not, I don't know. But he's in a situation now chasing that smoky prophet, what he said. You understand that? Chasing that, and it's in a place just being crushed. Every time we go, just being crushed. <clears throat> just being crushed. But in the, in the mind, thinking that I'm to do the Lord's will because somebody told me yeah. years ago yeah. that I'm yeah. supposed to do have a ministry there. Come on, would you please? Right. You, know, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. But a person has to see that. See that? Yeah. A person has to understand that. We're talking about a son of God. Talking about somebody, listen, no. we can sit down and reason together out of this word. Yeah. But in a trap. This is serious business, family. This is nothing to play with. God's people are free. The power of God is what we need. Look around you. Any place in the world today, people need the power of God. They don't need us preaching about something. They need to see the power of God operating in the lives of his people. You understand that? Hallelujah. That's what they need to see. They need to see the Christ on display. See that? So when we speak in some, to somebody's life, make sure it's the Holy Spirit. You got Amen. people, their whole, this man's life, this has been 10 years that I know of. It's, this man's life is wrapped around something that somebody spoke to him. Forget, forget God. Know the word, but in this bondage, in this trap. You see that? So we pray, and I know change is coming because when we pray, we believe God. But I'm telling you how it can work. That's too long. That's too long. You People are hanging out too long in the wrong places. If the Spirit of the Lord is not there, liberty is not there. You're in bondage. And this is what we're reading right here. Listen, you sport to them. You see this verse we just read? Sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Feasting with you, but you're nothing but sport to them. Keeping up their habits. Powering their their, their Fault flailing ministries that would flail if you weren't uh, keeping it up. You see that? You weren't being pleased through it. You see that? Go down to verse um, 18. I think it was the next next place I wanted to read there. Forgive me, I get real excited about this because we're talking about God's people. Amen. We're talking about God's people and I know what's available to us and I can't stand to see it like it's a zeal in me. Like like the like the Bible says about the Lord, the zeal of the Lord's house have consumed him. It's consumed me. It really has, glory to God. Verse 18 says, And when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. Listen, somebody's got a carrot dangled in front of you. You don't even know whether it was God or not. But because you are lusting for a position, you're going to hang out there all that time. Y'all are just saying it like this, you understand that? That's not us. This is, this is teaching. This is this is sharing the, the word because this is happening to people. See that? See that? They are lured through the lust of the flesh through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from, <clears throat> from them who live in error. Listen, while they promised them liberty, 
they promise in liberty, but they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. See this right here? I know the King James kind of sounds round and round kind of in, in, in a more simple language, but we understand exactly what's being said there because most of us have been through it and have lived through it. Yes. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, verses 1. While we're back here in this part of the Bible, go over to 1 John if you don't mind. We just do what the Lord says. That's why we're here anyway, to do what the Lord says. 1 John, 1 John 4. Let's look at the first, first few verses. <coughs> Because we understand, we want to understand spiritual gifts. We want to be obedient servants unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse one says, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, or try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world." See that? Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof we, ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now you have to know this by the Spirit. Listen, why was this added that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? This confession, this is why I said, people are not looking for a, a good preacher, a teacher today. People want to see a, a, a somebody where the life of Christ is being manifested through them. You know, they see the difference in that? This is the same thing here. This is what confession is. If you confess with your mouth his truth, but this confession right here, mm -hmm. confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, somebody ought to know he's residing in you. Yeah. See what Amen. I'm saying? When, when, when he ought to be able to be expressed <clears throat> from within us, his people. Yeah. See that? Yes. Love. Obedience. Mm -hmm. See that? Yes. Jesus Christ expressed. Hear it in giving. Hear it in your hear it in your in your offerings. The things that 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 that's him in expression. Gratitude in all things. In a in a strange place in darkness. The elder's testimony. Anything could have happened. You gotta in all your scripture said all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. She could have got off when the weather is bad. I don't know about you all. We got disoriented so badly one time in Arkansas because. We had a GPS, one of those early models, yeah, right. and the, it was a storm. So it wasn't picking up the signal right at us going the opposite direction. So see, anything could happen, you understand? Yeah. So in all your ways, acknowledge God, and he'll direct your path. Right. See that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God. I give him I give him praise for that. When you see, when you confess something, you're saying the same. You're agreeing with the same. If we agree with Christ, he should be freely expressed from within us. He is which is. Where is he? He ought to be able to be seen in any person. That especially that's calling themselves a believer. See that? That's where he is. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Another thing we saw, just to tie, kind of tie in something, it may sound fragmented, but we're trying to keep stay together. Listen. Wednesday. We saw the word of knowledge in a powerful way when Jesus told the fishermen where to drop the nets. They brought in a big catch when he did it. Here's what normally people will do. Be very careful with this. Peter did have the, have the wherewithal to listen to the Lord. But let me tell you something what would norm, could normally happen in a situation like that. You have Jesus who you, uh, it's your company. If you're looking at it in the natural, we fishermen. I'm, it's not just, I'm a fisherman. All these guys with me, we fishermen. And you go, we've been toiling all night and we haven't caught anything. And you're going to just come up and, and, and tell us what to do. We're fishermen. 
See that? If you have that mindset, you're going to miss something. Really. You know what? You'll never know more than God. Yes. Amen. We'll never know Amen. more than God. We're always going to need God, no matter how what we think our expertise is. If you want to see something, in fact, if you do want to see something, kind of like a Joseph situation, I thank God for how he used to grace me the same way. If you want to see the, the Lord, put him first. He'll, he'll stand your head and shoulders, all that stuff you're around. I told all y'all, don't be worried about the people you're working with. I'm telling you right now, you acknowledge God in all your ways, and he'll stand you above all of that. Let's be the name of God. I'm a living witness. Let's be his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He'll bring you above that. He'll bring you up and over. You're overcomer. And he'll show you that we just have to acknowledge him in everything. Praise God. Don't think that we know everything. <clears throat> that we Listen, well, we, we, you may hear a scripture. Well, we talked about that before. Listen, let me tell you something here in this house right here. <laughs> then we feast on manna from heaven. <clears throat> when we come together, if our hearts to hear the Lord, I don't care how many times you heard a scripture, God will give you something new and refresh you with just what you need when we come in this house. So just because you heard a scripture before, doesn't mean we have a handle on what God is saying, because God will take that same word, hallelujah, and he'll set it right in the midst of your situation for the day. Because Peter tells us that we be established in the present truth, glory to God. So whatever we need for today, that was working for another time, but whatever we need for today, God has our answer for today. Hallelujah. All we got to do is be gathered together unto him. That's his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are people filled with the spirit and we should be able to discern these things. Someone brought up the point before, I thank God, the early years of this ministry and how we looked at that tabernacle and the priesthood. You had to learn those foundational things. Praise the name of the Lord. You saw how God worked with natural Israel. That was, and the scripture said, that was an example for us. And then there were some things that were disqualified from the priesthood. It didn't matter. Listen, you could be a son of, of Levi all you wanted to. But if you had a flat nose, you were not going to enter that priesthood. Right. And what that spoke to is not being able to discern. Right. You see that? You could be a son of Levi all you want to. If you had a crook back, you can't bear up under the load, you, would, you weren't fit for the priesthood. All those things that tells us back in that Levitical order, all those things were for a reason. Listen, if you were blind, you couldn't be in the priesthood. If you can't see where you're going, you're going to show somebody else. And that's the problem that's happening today. The reason that I am saying that was mainly for that discernment. That sense should be so, so strong in us. The Holy Spirit will tell us things. And when we put our will up over his, <clears throat> that's when we tend to get in trouble. And I just wanted just a few minutes today. Look again at this word of knowledge operating so powerfully in the name of Jesus. If you will, please, let's go to John's Gospel. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. We'll get this started and do what the Spirit says, and then we'll be done. John chapter 1, verse, uh, we'll start at verse uh, 40, we'll start at verse 43, because it's where Philip and Nathaniel, it says, follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to see something <coughs> that's very wonderful. This, what we're getting ready to read, just from the scripture, has so many powerful truths in it that show us our ascension in Christ and the power of Christ that is operating in us even right now as we're just sitting under the cup of his anointing, just listening to him, just, just how the power of God in operation, just, just listen to what God's going to show us. John chapter 1, verse 43, the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find Philip and said unto him, follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? 
Philip said unto him, Come and see. Now, <clears throat> this is a good question. If you know the scriptures, this is where a lot of us are. We know some scripture, but we don't know all of the scripture. See that right there? Like, like, like with um, in New Covenant, you have a lot of examples. Uh, and when Paul would come and help them expound on the word yes. more properly, you understand that someone could come in here and help us out. Praise God. We can go some places and help somebody else out. You see that right there. Glory to the name of God. He knows that when Messiah comes, he's coming out of Bethlehem. You see that? Some things that are just inferred from what from the reading. You, you see that? So when Philip says we found him, and he's G Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph, something in click. You understand that? Now I know that happens all the time in here because listen, it happens. It's gonna happen to any of us. As we go higher in the spirit, we're not gonna have anything that will connect to it, but God is bring, what he does is when he shows us that heavenly. He's going to bring us up to it. Amen. We're under an open heaven. Yes. We're under an open heaven. Listen, expect the communication to be something that you never heard before. Amen. See that? Because we're, we're under an open heaven. It's not going to be business as usual like you hear in the earth. You're going to hear great and mighty things. And we're going to go higher and higher in the Lord. But the scripture is going to always be able to <coughs> help us see these things. So he asked, <coughs> excuse me. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Listen, come and see. This is what we have to do. If you're the kind of person that will be in a comfort zone and just won't move, like the situation we, t we told you about, the experience earlier, you just not, just not going to move, you, you're going to have to remove yourself from where you are. Yes. First of all, you think nothing can good come out of Nazareth, but there is a prophet that said he shall be called a Nazarene. You just don't know about that scripture yet, but you gonna, it's going to unfold for you. understand what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Just because you don't know it doesn't mean that it's not true. Amen. Glory Amen. to the name Amen. of the Lord. But you got to come and see. Right. You got to remove yourself from where you are, and then you got to come and behold something. So, let's see. Let's continue. In verse, in verse uh, 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Mm -hmm. And we gotta we gotta kind of kind of rest here for just a just a little little bit. An Israelite indeed. Well, where did the term Israel come in the first place? Jacob was called Jacob, but his name was changed to, to Israel. He had an encounter under this open heaven. See, this is what I'm trying to tell us. We, we, don't, we, we, we don't quite understand this ground that we have come upon. We, 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 we're getting there, but we're not understanding what is coming up over us as we just come to Jesus. See what I'm saying? See, when we come to Jesus, listen, family, he's going to tell you what's true of you. He's not going to tell you what's wrong with you. He's going to tell you what's true of you. Jesus sees him coming. Behold, an Israelite indeed. Listen, this is somebody that's a prince with God. Wasn't Jacob's name changed to Israel? You, may, you don't know it yet, but you are, you're a prince with God. An Israelite indeed. So I'm seeing here what the Lord is saying. This is, what, this is what's true of all of us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. So it says, in whom there is no God. A psalm says this. I'll, I'll give it to you for your notes, but you can turn there later. 30, psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. No God, and in whose spirit there is no God. You see what ministering on Jesus does? People are so comfortable saying, Still saying, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Yes. Did you give your life to Jesus? Yes, so what are you going to tell him? That you're going to crucify him afresh after you give your life to Jesus and you keep just saying, I'm just an old sinner. I'm trying to sound humble, but, but you're blaspheming. I'm telling you now. 
because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We've been purchased with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All powerful blood of Jesus, atoning blood of Jesus. And nothing can take away the effect of the atoning blood of Jesus. So instead of confessing what we were, confess what Jesus would say, we, who Jesus would say we are. An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. I've seen to it. See that? <coughs> Hallelujah. We thank God for these, these scriptures. See this? Jeremiah tells us also, 29 and 13, just some scriptures to help us. Ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Well, did we get a witness to the scripture this morning? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. The prophet is read for her in her offering. Witness to the scripture. <clears throat> ye shall seek me, listen, and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Hallelujah. So then, let's go on to the next verse. Nathaniel, verse 48, said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Now see, here's the thing. You think you're talking to a natural man. Okay. You think you're talking to a natural man. Well, he is right now in the flesh. But at the same time he's in the flesh, the son of God. Family, listen, if, if the spirit is leading you, you got something to say to me, I want to hear it. You understand what I'm saying? Even though you're in the flesh, at the same time, you're a son of God. You understand this right here? God wants us to be at a, a mindset that's so much higher than, than, than we are looking at. See that? Well, listen, whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Now this verse, if you did a private study, you just found a lot of people saying a lot of things. I'm going to say it like this right here by the Spirit. Nathaniel was postured scripturally for the blessing of the Messiah to come into his life. I'm going to share you, I'm going to share you why I'm saying that. He was, he, was, he was postured for the promise of God. He's under the fig tree. Whether that's an idiom, I've heard people preach it so many different ways. I'm telling you what the Lord is saying to us. Listen, he was postured because scriptures tell us some things about Israel and this, this fig tree. Micah, for example, 4 and 4 says, But they shall sit every man under his vine and fig tree, and under his vine, rather, and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken it. In other words, there's, a, there's going to be peace and safety. The scriptures tell us also in 1 Kings, when Solomon <coughs> said from Dan to Beersheba, there was, there was rest round about. There was no, <coughs> just peace and safety. You hear that? Peace and safety. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we know then, even if you're in a situation, even if you're in a situation, and he's in a transition, we know he's in a transition because Jesus is on the earth doing his earthly ministry. So at the same time, you got the old order of the Pharisees still in operation. So he's in a transition, and that's where most of us are. We are looking for this true thing. We want this true thing to come into operation. And as we posture ourselves, God, you said, listen, every man be on his body fig tree. All right, I'm going to posture myself right where that is. Listen, you posture, you posture yourself in your mindset. You posture yourself in your actions. See that? You can't say you believe one thing and doing something else. Right. Glory to the name of God. Amen. See that? So, I don't know what went on under the fig tree. If he was actually under a natural fig tree, you understand what I'm saying? But one thing I do know, he got God's attention. He got heaven's attention in what he was doing. So we can pray, we can see, we know he was he was seeking, he was a person who sought the scriptures because of his question to Philip. You understand that? See that? So again, Jesus said, before that Philip called me, Jesus is getting something straight. Listen, I don't know you because your buddy Philip filled me in on you. Somebody hear God. Amen. 
That's a, that's another thing people doing. Yeah. Somebody go gossip to somebody, and then they come. Somebody come to you, and they already know your business, but they act like they they just found out about it. All please, right. please, All right. please, All right. please. Let's be in the name of the Lord. Hear this. We're truly delivered and blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This yeah. is a, this works so powerfully if we just do it like the Lord says to do it. Hallelujah. Before the Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Now let me tell you about who's talking to, to Nathaniel in case we forgot. Jesus is in the flesh, but he's the word made flesh. If you want to just go back all the way. The fig tree is is the first other tree other than knowledge of good and evil tree of life that's actually called by name in the garden. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Did I see you when you and your mother and father when they covered themselves with fig leaves? I knew you way back then. I ain't just wow. I ain't just learned about you. Y'all hear God? Wow. I didn't just find out about you in my earthly ministry. I knew you from, from the beginning. See, we got to understand that too. God knows us like the script, scripture was read. He knows the plan he has for us. Yes. Hallelujah. From mother's womb, he knows the plan he has for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The thing is, we want our plan, his plan to conform to our plan for us. Say that. Just think about all the energy that's, that's wasted, all the all the, just in every way you can look at it, it's wasted because we didn't wait on the Lord in some situations. We just took off and and, and decided to just go. Well, I'm gonna be this. What you gonna be? They start. Your parents start out early. What you wanna be when you grow up? So they you know what to do with you. That <laughs> you want to spirit and children like I was. What you wanna be when you grow up? And then. Many times, it's, it's, it's like you try to fit what somebody else wants you to do. Yeah. You see? I'm just, just, just saying some things get us to just really think about who we are now that we are children of God. And we are children in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Israelite indeed. In whom there is no God. So then, <clears throat> verse 49 says, Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Listen, just in that exchange, I saw you under the fig tree. Just in that exchange, this is what happens when heaven meets earth. This, this is what happens when the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge are operating together by the power of the Holy Ghost instead of somebody just saying, listen, you, you ain't heard about me, all the meetings I had, and all the crowds I draw. You, you all know who I am. It's not like that. See, this got to be the power of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So verse 49, Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, look what he called him. Master, you just walked up to him, but something happened in just one exchange that lets you know this is the master. <clears throat> Rabbi, listen, thou art the son of God. Listen to the difference. Philip said, we found him. Philip said, he's, he's Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. But listen, now that he met him for himself, you're the son of God. You here doing a natural thing. Yeah, Joseph brought you through that line so you can set up your throne after David like God already said you would. You see that? But the, the, the truth of the matter is you're the son of God. You hear that? See, the, the exchange between us and other people should be so that they'll know the, the, the Holy Spirit working through whoever it is that that's the, that's, you listen, that's the Son of God operating in you. That's right. See that? Beloved, now we're the sons of God. Scriptures teach us. Yes, See that? Hallelujah. Thou art, listen, not only that, you're the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Let me run back to Old Covenant and read you something real quick. I'm going to Zephaniah and just read you a couple of verses. Zephaniah is a, is a, is a book in the Scriptures that helped me out real good one time. When I was in a place worshiping the Lord, and the Lord just, he just helped me real good out of, out of Zephaniah. Bless his holy name. He just did. Zephaniah, chapter 3, and um, verse, let's see, where do I want to start? First, let's start verse 9 and go up to 13. 
For then will I turn to the people of, of pure language. You hear that? Why wouldn't you know it's God if we live it in the spirit? Why wouldn't we understand it if we're filled with the spirit? What would be hindering us from understanding that it's God in <clears throat> a pure language? That they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. This is a verse that really, I'm telling you all, I'm standing here today in part because of this verse right here. I was getting ready to quit. I was getting ready to quit. My Bible fell open, and out of all the words on the page, my eyes landed right, right here at verse 10. I bet y'all shut up then. I'll tell you right now. Verse 11. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Mm -hmm. Hear that right there? Mm -hmm. I will also leave in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. That, now that's not meaning what you think it, it, it means. You see that right there? Yeah. When, when, listen, what are we doing now? We afflict our soul so that the spirit... Yes. Increases, you understand that we're, we're poor, blessed. We're poor. That's a blessing on the poor. See that? Hallelujah! You got everything. You don't need the Lord. So then, verse thirteen: The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. But they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. See, that's that symbol of the fig tree. It's peace and safety. It's, and the Lord said, his, it, it, "Listen, every man under his vine and fig tree. You'll invite your neighbor." To come sit with y'all in your vine and fig tree. That's a that's symbolic language for peace and safety. Verse 14 says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter <coughs> of Jerusalem. One, the Lord have taken away thy judgments. Somewhere in the exchange, Nathaniel understands this. You see that? He has he hath cast out thine enemy. See that? The king of Israel, even the Lord. Do you hear this? What did Nathaniel call it? The king of Israel. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. You hear this right here? The Lord is in the midst of us. Thou shalt <coughs> not see evil anymore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now we're getting down there. We just got a couple more verses from John, John 1. From John chapter 1. Praise God. Verses, uh, verses 50 51 will be done. Verse, verse 50 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, The last thing that they can say in verse 49 is that, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And it did, listen, it didn't take forever for him to learn that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, if you have the right exchange where your communication is with the Lord, you're going to know it's him. You see that? You're going to know it's him, with beyond shadow of doubt. Verse 50, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. See, you've got this whole Jacob dynamic working in here. Because the next thing he tells him is, And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter, hereafter, ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Well, we're under an open heaven. The latter is the Christ. Angels are messengers. Another thing that's been done, people, the things that are to help us get put away from us like they are untouchable. See that? I thank God for angels. Run into them quite often in my life. I'm telling you right now, God will keep you. I, God will keep you in some ways you know it has to be God keeping you. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Nobody did just happen up. It was God's messenger. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So then, you have this, this heaven open, angels ascending. So what does that look like for us? We're under an open heaven. The communication between heaven and earth is constant. I have not, I can't tell you when, not been able to have something to testify of my Lord about. You understand that? Because he is the life. He is my life. You understand that? He is our life. You're doing the same thing. You're being transformed in a more grand way than you can ever imagine. And I, I always say the best way to gauge it is get out from under this, this um, shroud of, of glory and go out in some other setting. And you will see how the power of God is already in effect and working in you. You'll see things differently. You'll learn to see him differently. Your, your language will change. Everything about you will change. And the beautiful part of, of, about it is, no matter when you come in on it, that's why, I remember the, the parable, the pay was the same no matter what hour they came to work. No matter what time you get here. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. We all got the same thing. It's the same power of Christ that's working in us. It's got the same effect. It just, we just need to let the Spirit do it separately or vari variations as He chooses because He knows how it's going to edify the body. See that? Hallelujah. So isn't it wonderful? Constant flow of communication. Hereafter, He says, you'll see. Everything we read in this lesson and it's happened in this house. It's happened. We came to see him. We left all that behind. Amen. Left old order behind. Right. And we came to see. He introduced himself to us. He saw us coming before we, when we first took off. Yeah. On the way. Like the product. He saw us on the way coming. He go, he, when that happens, when we come to him, he gets to us before we even get to him. Y'all understand? See that right there? Yes. See that? Yes, Lord. He came to us. He received us unto himself. <coughs> Hallelujah. Then ears open up. Impression. Remember that? Ears open impression. Start we hear start hearing the word. It wasn't just listen, it wasn't always just a, a good lesson. Oh, we're learning about the sanctuary, we're learning who we are learning. I mean, sometimes that word would come. To, I told you many times I push away from my desk. I just push away from the desk and go in I'd like it, in the kitchen, do something, go outdoors or something. I'm telling you, just just empower, yes. convicting. Yes. Power. Yes. If you want to, if you want to be a son and you're serious. The word is going to come. It's going to be a hard word, just like it's going to be a soft word. Amen. It's going to be fire. And when the fire comes, I was sharing with someone, when the fire comes, people let it go. They turn around. So it's about them talking about me. I, I can't talk about you. I don't know nothing about you. But what the Spirit shows me. You understand that? You hear that? I don't know anything about you talking about you. If I did, I wouldn't talk about you. Right. Understand that? Amen. That's not why we're here. Right. We're all growing up together. Amen. We're growing up together. It may sound like directly at you. Talking at me as it, as it goes. No, that's the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. That's Amen. word of knowledge, that's word of wisdom, Lord. faith, all the rest of them coming together. It knows exactly what we need. He knows, and he knows when we need it. And I said that to encourage you. Don't don't quit on him. I, listen, if, you, if you're tired of looking at me, that's no problem. I can understand it. Don't worry about it. But don't quit on him. Hallelujah. Don't quit on the Lord. He's got plenty of voices in this house. You know yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, the Lord bless you. It's a serious square business, isn't it? Yes. The truth is always so much better. 
than the counterfeit. Yes. Yes. And we have to be helpless one to another. We can have powerful ministry and just like that, something can come in and try to destroy it. Try to tear up the beautiful bond that God is making between his people. See that? I'll say it again. The telltale sign when it is not coming from God is division. When it's division, then it comes from God. Amen. Understand that? Yes. Yes. Got it. God bless you. Amen. Amen.